Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Talk Thursday. Today, we are, I'm really psyched to listen to these two guys, Boway Guy and Ron Holmes, on the potential of startup companies in the Philippines. Boway Guy is an entrepreneur from Silicon Valley. He founded the World Startup Report. It's a project that aims to connect with local entrepreneurs around the world and pool together best business practices. But he also was a founder in Card Munch, which he recently sold to LinkedIn. Ron Hose, he, he claims he's a grandfather in Silicon Valley, but anyway, he is an investor, advisor to many Silicon Valley startups. He is the founding partner at Innovation Investors. That's Eric Schmidt's, um, the, the guy from Google, uh, venture capital firm. Um, we're pleased to talk to them. Send your questions, um, use hashtag Talk Thursday. You can send it to Rappler.com. Gentlemen, it is so good to have you in Manila. Ron, I'm going to start with you. So you're further from me. Um, what are you doing in the Philippines? Uh, I'm here looking at startups and opportunities. I think uh, there is a lot of uh, growth that's going to come out of this uh, part of the world over the next uh, few decades. Uh, there's a lot of white space and opportunity, and uh, maybe we can discuss more. You're a Cornell graduate. You partnered with a lot of firms, and then you created TalkBox. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess now that you're a, a on the investing end, or what's the difference? What are you looking for? So I've been kind of straddling both sides, both as an entrepreneur and investor. Um, as an investor, um, we mostly look for great teams. They're uh, pursuing opportunities in big, uh, in big markets. So to have a successful company, we believe uh, you need to be pursuing a large enough market to make it worthwhile to have a return on investment. Uh, you need to have a unique product that's, uh, defen uh, that's defensible uh, or a unique idea. Uh, but most importantly, you need to have a great team because very often what you start with uh, is not exactly what you end up with. And Jeez. great teams can change and, um, and adapt along the way. But wait, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, that's a long story, but to cut this short, um, I sold a company to LinkedIn about two years ago. And uh, last October, I left the company and was deciding what to do with my life. And I decided to take a year off. Uh, to really give back to the world startup community by doing a project to help the world. Basically travel around to 29 countries and 36 cities and write about what's happening around this world. And um, so far I've been to about eight countries and uh, Manila uh, is uh, you know, my eighth stop and I look forward to going to 21 more countries after this. What have you found here in Manila so far? I absolutely love this place. I, uh, I was so shocked to run into my old friend Ron uh, who just called me up when I was having an event here. He said, hey, I'm here. I was like, why are you here? And then we started chatting, and I started chatting with some of the founders, and then I just saw so much growth opportunity in this place. It just makes me really, really happy, and uh, I can't wait to like, see where this country ends up in the next five to 10 years. I want to tap mo more of this energy that you have, but Ron, why the Philippines? Uh, it's very easy. So I think you know, it, it's been overlooked for a really long time. Um, the economy here is growing. Uh, it's becoming investment grade. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a huge pool of talent uh, that is uh, far, far less expensive than in the U.S. Uh, if you look locally, there is a lot of uh, white space areas where, especially in technology, there's just explain white space, not, not, uh, not white space it. areas uh, open for uh, areas where there are opportunities where no like one is ocean. competing. Blue yes. ocean, exactly. So there is, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're thinking about starting a company, there. Uh, there are just so many areas where you can uh, still come in and innovate uh, or, or build a company without facing a lot of competition. Um, and for outside entrepreneurs, uh, this country is English speaking, uh, the culture is great, the weather is great. Uh, it's a phenomenal place to, uh, to be based out of. But why the Philippines out of all the different countries in the world that you could have chosen? Uh, so Asia in general, I think, is, uh, um, is where growth is going to be coming. Uh, over the next uh, three decades, yes, um, there is a lot of opportunity at the long at the long tail of the market. So this is, uh, you know, going stepping. If we're looking at the Philippines, stepping out of Metro Manila and looking at uh, the province, right? That's where uh, 80 to 90 million people live. Yes. Uh, today they don't have a lot of access to education, healthcare, even products. A number of products right. are available on the shelf. If you're uh, it, the farther out you go out of Manila, reduces dramatically, and the opportunity to deliver product, um, uh, product services, and information to these people is going to change rapidly over the next two to three years because of the prevalence of mobile devices and uh, cheap uh, Android devices. Data plans are getting cheaper. Yes. Um, 
So do you see the opportunity to, to move um, as development pushes in? Yeah, I think it's by direction. I see the opportunity to, um, yeah, the opportunity to deliver to deliver to uh, to that market segment is opening up, um, and it's economically it's going to be huge, and even you know as a if you look at it just as a do good thing, right? You're you're giving people something they did not did not have access to before, um, and that's exciting. Actually, that's the the startup space right now in the Philippines seems to focus on trying to find ways to help public sector. Mm -hmm. At least that's my impression. Boy, what have you what have you found here so far? And the way I look at the the startup in the Philippines right now is that um, it's actually all across the world. Yes. I think as the internet penetration goes up in a country, yeah, there are going to be different sets of things, commodities, uh, services that everyone is going to need. Everyone needs to go find a date. Everyone needs to go travel. Everyone needs to go listen to music. Everyone needs to go rent an apartment. Yes. These are what I refer to as commodity innovations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are the things that will be in almost every country in the future. These are the basic services, transportation. Like these are very, very basic things. And, um, and a lot of times, uh, the big infrastructure, like government, is not going to change things very quickly. Um, but with the help of internet, you can do things very cheap. So I foresee the startups going to these things first and help shape the country moving into the next, like, you know, ten Fan years. Fantastic! Both of you have started companies. Um, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you that also. <laughs> you know, jumping—it's like jumping off a cliff. I mean, what are your lessons learned? How would you advise others who have started or are trying to start companies? So I'll jump into this because uh, yeah. what you just said resonate with me because. Uh, uh, the company that bought my company is called LinkedIn. LinkedIn. His company is Card Munch. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> modest man. Go. <laughs> uh, and the founder of LinkedIn is someone that is just beloved by the entire Silicon Valley community. His favorite quote is, uh, "Building a startup, it's uh, like jumping off a burning building and learning how to build a parachute on the way down." <laughs> It's, uh, it's scary, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's irrational, it's scary, um, but you know what, like, it's the people who are crazy enough to think that they're, they're willing to, they're, the people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. That's another quote from Steve Jobs. Um, yeah, well, I mean, e economy, the, uh, or, I mean, the world rewards people who, takes ri who take risks. Uh, and so if you want to do something big, you need to take a risk. Um, so I encourage people to do it. Uh, and do it, you know, yeah. Do it and when you fail, try again. Um, <laughs> because you will fail many times before you do something successful. Uh, there is, Have you failed? Yeah, many times. Um, An example for those of us who are. <laughs> uh, so before we started TalkBox, I, you know, there were maybe four or five different companies that we started that you've, never, that you've never heard of, heard of, that no one has ever heard of. Uh, you know, we started working three, six months, and realized, okay, this is not going to work. Scratch next. Um, you know, then we did something that seemed to take off. Yes. Um, then people, people usually remember people, your successes. Yeah, people usually don't tell that end of the story, but you, you need to know that that's part of the game. Uh, yes. You really need to fail. It's actually, I think, the you number really one. You need to fail. I can't yeah, believe you the, said that. Okay. You, you need to fail, and the important attribute is uh, is how you fail and how fast you get up and run again. So fail fast, recover fast. I mean, you'll hear a lot of people say that. Um, and in terms of you know what's you know what what's the most important advice? There, I mean, there are so many factors, right? Uh, you know, so many different lines in that parachute. I would say the one thing that you really cannot compromise on is the people you work with. Um, so make sure you work with really, 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 really good people. Um, um, you're, did, have you had a moment when you failed? Oh, <laughs> I stopped counting. <laughs> really? Okay, the 20 so somethings have different energy from I'm almost 50. So I will, <laughs> I will say I'm much older than you. Um, the, you look very good oh, for it. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the 20 somethings, there's a certain energy, mm -hmm. you're, the risk taking, it's easier when you're when you're in your 20s, but um, where do you get, I guess, how do you look at the world? Why did you start with, uh, as an entrepreneur, instead of going to, you worked for Apple, you worked for Oracle? I worked for a lot of very big companies. Yes. Um, and I tried a lot of small things in the past. I failed a few times, but uh, when I decided to really get into the startup was, um, actually, 
not a decision I made. It's actually a decision that made by my old boss at Apple. He actually kicked me out of Apple. Uh, the reason being, he said, you have too many good ideas. You can't stay at Apple. You need to go and build your own company. And uh, to me, like, I'm, a, I'm a Chinese native, yes. so I'm a very shy person. I don't have a lot of these ambitions. Uh, I want to you know, be an engineer and do that for the rest of my life. Um, but meeting the right people, the right mentor, they gave me this kick in the butt, and off I went, and I never looked back. What are you going to do next? Uh, to be honest, I don't really know, um, but there are so many opportunities, uh, especially in the Asian Pacific region. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I wouldn't be surprised if I end up returning to Philippines after this trip and then help the community and build something here. Ron, what do you look for when you're looking at companies? You talked about teams, but when, how do you decide which companies to invest in? Right. You did this for a big guy, Eric Schmidt. Um, it's really biased on the team. Uh, team, so you look for good yeah, teams. Great, I mean, great idea, bad team, you know, recipe for a failure. Um, great team, mediocre idea, they'll improve their idea. They'll, mm, you know, they'll get true. there, uh, always. So, you know, we look for people who are relentless. They will not give up for anything. Uh, we look for people that are open-minded, that can, you know, take feedback, that ask a lot of questions and integrate it so they can, you know, have their eyes open and, and maneuver when they go up. Um, you know, they need to be smart, but smart is a commodity. There are a lot of smart people. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we look for people that we're going to enjoy spending time with and working with. Uh, that's the honest, you know, the honest truth. Like, we want to, you know, we, life is short, we want to have a good time. So. <laughs>